So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jan Kara from Suze Labs, and uh, I work on performance team, but this is actually not, this talk will not be related to performance at all. I'll be speaking about testing kernels in the engineering cloud in Provo, which we have. So first I will speak about what engineering cloud in Provo is because I'm not sure everybody actually knows what it is and what the scripts try to achieve. Uh, then, then how the testing scripts uh, are uh, created, like how they work internally so that you can understand what's happening. Uh, and then how you can run tests with those and uh, eventually implement, either configure new tests or even implement new tests uh, using the framework. So first some introduction. So engineering cloud in Provo. I'm not sure uh, how many people know this. Let's make a short query. So who knows what is engineering cloud Provo? Uh, Oh, okay, <laughs> not, mu mu not much. So, engineering cloud in Provo is a pool of machines we have inherited from HP originally. It belongs fully to SUSE now. Uh, it's like SUSE internal cloud. It's backed by, um, I don't know, about 100 servers, maybe a bit more. I'm not sure about the exact numbers. But it is, it's a decent pool of machines. It runs our SUSE OpenStack cloud product. Uh, but what is good? to know is that it's available for anybody in the engineering, your standard LDAP password and login works there. So anybody who has LDAP account in Nuremberg can log into the engineering cloud and can start VMs there, destroy VMs, do whatever he wants. Uh, so I've got an idea and realized it as one of the hack weeks uh, to use uh, this pool of machines or virtual machines created uh, in this cloud for testing kernels because I got bored by trying to find working machine in Ortos. Uh, so a web front end for the cloud is actually accessible on the address shown above, it's ENG Cloud Provo Susanet. So that's web interface uh, through which you can start machines and manipulate with them. Uh, and it's useful for debugging your stuff, you know, when you run testing and something doesn't work, then probably the web interface is the most uh, convenient way to investigate what's going on. Uh, you can find uh, some documentation about uh, engineering cloud in SUSE Wiki. Again, the address is here, and it's also in the paper that's in the proceedings. Uh, so, there is also Rocket Chat channel where you can get help about engineering cloud and the team is reasonably responsive, so they can usually help with solving problems when that something doesn't work in the engineering cloud. Now, the scripts I have created are set of bash scripts, <laughs> uh, so really advanced scripting uh, that, sim uh, that simplify running of tests uh, in uh, engineering cloud. So they are aimed at fire and forget type of testing. You're, so you basically you simply type a command and the shell script will start a VM in the cloud for you, install a kernel there, run tests there, gather the results, and you can then later investigate what the results were for the tests. Uh, so I personally use it for running FS tests for the changes I do. So when I do some kernel changes, now before I push them to our kernel repository or even upstream, I, I just fire set of tests for various configurations. They run in VMs in the cloud, and you know, after a couple hours, I check what the results are, and if everything is good, then I'll just push the results. Uh, so uh, it's I've script uh, I've wrote the script so that it's relatively easy to add another test suite. So as I said, currently only FS tests are implemented, but it's very easy. It's both. I'd say one hour of work to integrate another test suite, like block tests or LTP or whatever you imagine. Uh, and it's technically it's also it should be pretty easy to adapt this, these scripts to any other OpenStack-based cloud. So, like this cloud that is in Nuremberg, which is also based on Nuremberg, should be very easy to use with this. Basically, you just change some URLs, and it should that should be it. Uh, so what you need to have to use this set of scripts, first you need to download the scripts from my GitLab repository. Again, the URL is up there or 
in the proceedings. Uh, you need to install two prerequisites. So there are two prerequisites which are kind of non-obvious. One is Python OpenStack client, and the other ones are like SUSE certificates that are needed to access the control nodes of the, of the cloud. So you need these two packages, and the rest is pretty standard stuff like rsync, SSH, tar, IP road, I guess it's on any developer machine already exists. Then uh, before you start doing this, you also need to import your SSH key into engineering cloud. Probably the most convenient way is to do it through the web interface. So, so basically you have to import your public key to the engineering cloud under some name. And then when you create machines in the engineering cloud, these keys will be, out, will be automatically inserted into the created VM virtual machines. So you can then SSH to them. Uh, so after you have imported your SSH key, you are basically set up and you can start running tests. So uh, basically the architecture of the ET EC test script is such that there is a main EC test command and everything else is implemented as a subcommand uh, of this. So this is now popular <laughs> API, let's say. Uh, so. Uh, there are subcommands for starting new tests, for che checking what the status of tests is, and for fetching results back from the cloud to your local machine. Uh, there is, when you start the test, first there is something which uh, we call control instance. That's a virtual machine inside the engineering cloud uh, that's used for starting other VMs that do the actual testing, deploying kernels to these VMs, also, it captures the results from the test VMs. This is also because the cloud is in Provo and the networking connection is occasionally flaky or has high latency, so it's just most, uh, it's the simplest to just fetch the results to another instance in the cloud. And then, you know, you can just fetch it to your local machine when, when you have good network connection. Uh, the Control instance is identified by the something which I call testing campaign name, and it's minus an option to the script. So basically when you start the test, you have to tell the name of the testing you are going to do, and that creates control instance under this name. You can then reuse this instance for starting further tests. So, so in principle, there is one control, is in, one control instance is enough for all the testing you do. Uh, and the control instance is gets IP that is accessible from anywhere inside the R&D network. Uh, then this control instance starts something which is called test instance, or there can be multiple test instances. Uh, that gets, and this is what actually gets the kernel deployed and where the tests are run. Uh, this VM gets IP address that's accessible only from inside the cloud virtual network. So, so basically only the control instance can access these test VMs, uh, or you can use, so you, can, you need to use the control instance as a jump host to the, to the test instances if you need to investigate something there. Or there are other ways, but I don't want to, I guess, go into details now. Uh, and as I already said, there one control instance can spawn multiple testing VMs, basically to run different configurations of a test or stuff like that. Uh, okay, so, so how do you run tests? So this command, this is the command that you can issue to run the test. So uh, there you can see there is minus N, which says that the testing, like the control instance will be named C12SP3 because I, I decided to do testing for C12SP3 and I tend to have one control instance per product just, just to have it tidy, but whatever, yeah. So that's the name, uh, then which identifies the control instance and it also appears in the names of the test instances that are controlled by the control instance. Then you have this configuration to run. Basically that's configuration file that, that describes what tests are going to be executed. Then you have to specify the SSH key, so this is the name minus K option specifies the name of the SSH key that was imported into the engineering cloud. 
And then you specify kernel to test, which there are several ways how kernels can be specified. This is probably the simplest one. So you simply pass the RPM uh, to the test script, and the test script will deploy this, take care of deploying this to the VM that does the testing. You can actually repeat the minus T option, specifying the configuration multiple time. For each configuration, we will spawn a new test VM and run tests specified in this configuration file that in that VM. So that way you can start multiple configurations at once. But you can also later use, as I said, you can also like do the next invocation of the EC test run command, and if you specify the same name, then it will reduce the same control instance. Everything works just fine. Now what happens? So uh, when you start this EC test transcript, it will first authenticate into the engineering cloud. Uh, now for the initial authentication, you need the username and password. The username gets inferred either from the OS username environment variable or simply for, from your user variable, uh, environment variable. Uh, and the password you have to enter from console. Now when you do this, uh, we will obtain an authentic authentication token from the control node in the engineering cloud. And this authentication token is then used for following requests. So, so you need to enter the password just once. Uh, all the other ones, all the other requests for, uh, to the engineering cloud use this authentication token. Uh, this authentication token is valid for, I don't know, about one day. I'm not sure if I remember the number right, but it's about it. Uh, and the scripts actually refresh the co token after a couple hours. So if you like keep using the scripts, then uh, they will automatically refresh the token and you don't have to enter the password. If you don't use the scripts for a day or so, then the token will expire and you will have to enter the password again after starting them. Uh, so after you have authenticated into the engineering cloud, uh, it, uh, like control instance will be created under the name that has user, then test control, and then the name of the testing campaign you are starting. Then the kernel RPM you have specified will be copied to the control instance. Control instance will start the test instance in the cloud, copy the kernel to the test instance, install the kernel there, reboot the test instance to boot into the new kernel, and start the testing as described by the configuration file. Uh, the script will also wait uh, for the testing to finish, basically until the testing script stops. Uh, you can specify minus minus detach option which then basically the scripts will stop as soon as everything is started up and then you can use other commands to actually check the status. The output from the testing script uh, is then captured by the control instance as well as the kernel log and uh, possibly other data that the testing, testing script decides to copy to the control instance after the test is finished. Uh, now, how we, how we can check results, there is command EC test status for this. So by default, it will report status of all, for all control instances, it will report status of all test VMs that are running from this control instance. On the bottom of the slide, you can see, you can see some sample output. Uh, you can constrain the output only to a particular control instance using the minus N option. Uh, there are four states that are currently reported by, the script, uh, by this script. Either the test is running, which means it's still running, or finished, which means the test script has successfully finished. Uh, and the testing VM has been actually shut down not destroyed, but shut down. So, so it's not running anymore, but it still exists. Uh, th there is another state which is called just shut down, which means that actually the test, somehow we do not have a record that the testing script would have successfully finished, but the, the testing VM is not running anymore. So this usually means that the VM somehow got stopped for some other reason, like the kernel has crashed or whatever, depends. 
so this shouldn't you shouldn't usually see this, but it may happen due to some problems. And it can report also deleted, which means that the testing VM doesn't exist anymore. Someone has already deleted it. You can use minus V. Uh, if you use it once, it will report like last five lines of the output of the test script. Uh, so by that you can peek what the where the testing actually is. If you specify minus C twice, it will also report like last five lines of the kernel messages or stuff like that. Uh, Okay, once the tests have finished, you can fetch the results from the control node. There is easy test fetch for this. Uh, so by default, again, by default, again, it downloads the results from all the control instances. Again, you can constrain to a particular control instance using minus an option. Uh, and it will fetch the output from the testing script, the kernel fi log file, the test configuration file, so you will have that stored in the results directory as well, so that you can easily, actually after the fact, find out what has been tested. Uh, and uh, there are also possibly other files that the test suite decides to copy. So for example, in case of FS tests, once the test finished, we will copy all the resulting files from FS tests to, uh, to the results directory as well, so in that is in these files, there is like for each test, the output of the particular test and possibly some differences against the golden output and stuff like that. Uh, and the fetched results by default get deleted from the control instance and the virtu testing virtual machine gets destroyed. You can uh, suppress this behavior by using minus K option, then the results will be kept and the VM as well. Uh, but when you fetch again, uh, we, we actually use rsync to fetch the results. So when you fetch again, you will, we will not refetch the results again because rsync just recognizes you have the results already on your local machine and will not copy them. Then uh, if you decided not to delete the machines, you can use ec test delete command to just delete the, just delete the, uh, the testing instances after the fact and the results. And you can use EC test delete also to delete the control instances you don't need anymore. Okay, alternative ways of providing kernel. So I, I've described that you can provide the kernel by specifying the RPM that gets just copied from the local machine. There are other ways how to specify the kernel to test. So. What is implemented is you can just provide it a git tree with kernel sources. Uh, it will just push the git tree to the control instance, compile the kernel there in the control instance and deploy it to the testing VM. Uh, for this, uh, you need to specify the kernel configuration file with which we will be compiling. Similarly, you can specify the uh, tarball. Again, we'll just copy the tarball to the control instance, build it there, deploy. Uh, or you can specify kernel source type of Git repository. So basically, we'll just, again, push the kernel source to the control VM called killed in the control instance to apply all the patches, compile the kernel, deploy, and test. Uh, the final option is to reuse kernel on the control instance from previous run. So sometimes you start off some test and then you realize that you want this same kernel to be used again for some other tests. Uh, and so that you don't have to copy the kernel again to the control instance, compile it again, deploy it and whatever. You can just tell the scripts to reuse the kernel from the like previous run, you identify the previous run by actually specifying the directory on the control instance, which is a bit inconvenient, but you can find out the directory on the control instance either by looking into the control instance or by inspecting logs from the previous run. So if people want to use this more, I can make this probably more nice for use, but so far it works fine for me. Uh, okay. So this is basic. This is the basic usage. Now, uh, how you can like add your own test configurations, or even new test suite. So, our con test configuration files are in configs 
subdirectory of the script. Now this is just a convenience, uh, like they are more like sample configuration files, you can place your configuration files wherever you want, but also if someone has some sensible configuration files, I'm happy to take them and push them to GitLab repository. Uh, each configuration file has some, I call it configuration directives, uh, which start with three hashes. Uh, and it's always three hashes and the name of the variable to set. So, so there are currently about five like directives recognized, five variables. So there is EC test test suite, which basically determines which test suite uh, is going to be run, is going to be executed. Uh, it's the test suite has to have some support scripts in the test subdirectory. Then uh, you have to specify EC test image, which is virtual machine image, which is used as a base to spawn the testing instance. So basically this VM image will be started up and uh, it is expected that this image has the test suite installed and stuff like that. Then you have to specify the flavor of the instance started. So flavor is the thing in engineering cloud or generally in any OpenStack cloud which determines how many CPUs the machine have, how much memory, how much disk space and stuff like that. So this is, uh, there is, I don't know how much, 20 or something like that flavors in the open engineering cloud. Uh, you can, through the web interface, find out which these are and actually what's the, what are the respective amounts of CPUs and memory and stuff like that. Uh, then there is, there are two more arcane <laughs> configuration options. Like one is module param, which ba by which basically which is basically the content of modprobe conf or modules conf in etc directory. So by uh, this is there so that you can, for example, specify parameters to kernel modules that are being loaded because sometimes we need to specify like allow unsupported modules and stuff, options like that to modprobe so, uh, for your testing. So that's, so that, so we have this, so that this is convenient. And then uh, there is option so that you can actually configure partitions on the ephemeral disk. So what is ephemeral disk? Every OpenStack instance has like the root partition or root disk that's used for the system. And uh, you can in principle use it for data, but it's a bit ineffective. And then it has second disk, which is called ephemeral disk. And uh, this is again from some other storage pool. And basically, whenever the instance that's create, uh, gets created, new space is allocated from the storage pool and gets assigned to the VM as an ephemeral disk. So once the VM is destroyed, this storage is automatically released. And uh, uh, so, the, uh, for example, for FS tests, I use this ephemeral disk for testing. And this configuration option, scratch disk, parti scratch disk partitions, is a way to configure partitioning of the ephemeral disk so that, for example, for FS tests, you need a couple actually block devices to run on, so you, you can configure a splitting of the ephemeral disk. Uh, now, what another thing what you should know is that when you simply start testing, the configuration file will, will get copied to the directory on the control instance with the results, and it will also get copied to the testing VM. Now, how this configuration file is used by the test suite is completely up to the test suite. So for example, with FS tests, uh, the test suite just sources this configuration file. So the rest of the configuration file is, uh, is essentially bash script, uh, which just sets environment variables uh, determining how FS tests are going to be run. So for which file system type, for uh, which devices are going to be used for for uh, testing and stuff like that. Uh, okay, when you want to add new test suite, uh, you first you need to create install script. I'll put it under tests, name of the test suite, install sh file. And that's a script that basically customizes the base image. So, so you have some like stock 
images in the engineering cloud, like OpenSUSE 15.0 or OpenSUSE 15.1 images, which I usually use. Uh, and uh, this script basically is supposed to install additional packages you need and generally set up the test suite uh, for the testing. And uh, like you may uh, then when the image is customized, we create a snapshot of this image, uh, and then this is used for testing. I'll speak about that a bit later. But generally, the, why we have this script and not just you know take arbitrary image that you have installed by hand is because the images need to be refreshed from time to time because the engineering. Uh, cloud, you know, gets updated to the latest version of the OpenStack and stuff like this. And sometimes it happens that just the old distribution image stops working with the new version of this cloud. Yeah. So you need to refresh, refresh your image based on some newer distribution. Uh, and so, so this script makes it easy. So basically, then when such stuff happens, or when when you simply want to update the test suite, you just basically call the command to refresh the image and everything magically happens. Uh, so the install script is one thing you need to implement when you add a new test suite. Then the run script is the second thing you need to implement. So that's the script that's going to be run in the control instance, in the results directory, and it usually, it gets the IP address of the testing VM. So it needs to SSH into the testing VM and start the test suite there. So now it's like 10 lines of code actually for FS tests. Uh, and uh, it is also responsible for fetching the results after the testing is finished. So uh, back to the control instance. That's actually why it is started on the control instance. What automatically happens is fetching of the like console output of this test script and fetching of the kernel logs to the control instance. That happens automatically and the test suite doesn't care, doesn't have to care about that. Uh, final thing that needs to happen is creating a sample configuration file specifying the flavor, test suite name, image name, and then you are ready to call the command which is on the bottom of the slide, at the bottom. Uh, so create test image subcommand. You again specify SSH key, the sample configuration, the base, the image to base the test suite on, and it will spawn the VM in the engineering cloud. Run the install script on the VM. Create snapshot of the VM. Copy it under the name which you've specified in the configuration file and basically you are, and then destroy the VM again, so then you are ready to start testing. Uh, now, if you are interested in more technical details, there is some more in the proceedings, actually. But I guess that's about it. Uh, so, yeah, by I am having this talk, so I think it's really useful to have this kind of testing. I'm, it's pretty useful, at least for me, for running FS tests in the engineering cloud, uh, because it allows me to easily to parallelize and don't bother about free machines in Ortos and stuff like that. So I think it can be useful also for other kernel engineers to run their tests. Uh, I am happy to help people to actually start using this if they are interested. I can have help, like either implement or help with implementing other test suites to be integrated in this if people are interested. Like as I said, it's, I, it's about one hour of work, in my opinion, to integrate another test suite, unless there is some, something substantial, substantial needed. Like for example, for if we wanted to do like networking tests with multiple hosts, then like it would need some more work to actually spawn multiple test VMs and learn how to how to how they should talk to each other so that would be a bit more work but like standard test suite like LTP or a block test or whatever would be like another one hour of work to actually create the VM and uh, automate the test suite so that's all I have prepared I originally wanted to do also some demonstration but the networking connection is quite flaky here for me so probably it's not worth it 
so if anyone has any questions. Do you have it all in the wiki? Uh, like as, Suze wiki? As in, uh, uh, yeah, Suze wiki or read me or something of that sort. So I have, uh, so GitLab has a read me, so GitLab repository has a read me, but it's pretty sparse. I want to update it basically with the content of the paper I have written for the labs conference. So that was also one of the <laughs> reasons I've signed up for this talk. So one was popularization, the other one was to write a decent documentation. So, so yes, the documentation exists, and I will uh, basically the content of the paper will be put to the GitLab repository as a README file, and I'll try to keep it reasonably up to date if anything significantly changes. Okay, if no one has anything else, then thanks for attention and.